Okay, um, welcome. I'm going to talk about testing for a little bit today. And I am at a website called TamilTube.com. Tamil is an ancient language. It's an official language in India and Sri Lanka and Singapore. Uh, it's spoken by about 70 million people. And um, <laughs> why does that really matter? Well, not too much, except that Tamil Cube, T-A-M-I-L Cube, C-U-B-E, TamilCube.com. Uh, if you go there, you can find tests, general knowledge tests, uh, arithmetic tests, logical reasoning questions, nonverbal reasoning questions. Um, so I'm just going to go to the general knowledge questions for a minute because I want to talk. I, the reason I went here is because um, they're just good multiple choice tests. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about testing and just the, the skill of taking a test um, because it's a separate skill set. Now, when you're studying, of course, the most important thing is to understand the material, but how you study and, and how you prepare for a test really does make a big difference, and just how you take a test makes a difference. And I took a class in 10th grade. I was an exchange student living in Australia, and all the 10th graders were required, or 11th graders, I can't remember, year 11, I think, yeah. Anyway, you were required to take a class on how to take a test if you were going to go on to take the matriculation exam at the end of high school. It was optional. You only had to go to high school at the time through 10th grade. But if you were staying on, that's what it was. If you were staying on for 11th and 12th grade, then you have to take a test taking class. And really, it was, we covered all sorts of things, you know, how to write essays, how to read, how to study, how to do all sorts of stuff. But how to take multiple choice tests. Um, we practiced a lot and I got better at it and I found that it really improved my the, the outcome uh, for me in, in taking tests because if you think about it, when you take a test, it's meant to be an accurate measure of how well you know a subject. That's the intention. That's the assumption. For most people, it's not an accurate measure um, because most people don't take a test very well. And so they do worse than, they, than what they should do, right? Uh, because let's say you know 80% of the material. If you don't score 80% on the test, then you did worse than you should have done. Um, if you're a really good test taker, a clever test taker, then you may do better than what you actually know. and Maybe that's not fair, but who would complain, you know, if they knew 80% of the material, but they scored 90%? Who's going to complain about that? Okay, um, so I'm going to just talk generally, and we're going to just go through some questions here and talk generally about the approach to the test and the approach to questions. And one of the things I encourage you to do is go take a bunch of tests. Go to TamilCube.com and... Take a bunch of tests. Just practice taking tests. Um, for one thing, you're going to get just better at reading questions, reading answers, getting comfortable with a test-taking environment. Um, so I encourage you to take tests on subjects you know nothing about. Take tests as much, you know, just frequently and just for fun. Try to turn it into a game um, because if you can turn it into a game, you're going to be a lot more relaxed. Um, and if you're relaxed, you're going to be able to think more clearly. As soon as you're stressed, it's a lot harder to, you know, well, a little bit of stress is fine. That can keep you focused, but too much stress, your mind just kind of shuts down. You don't think clearly. And so anyway, the moon is a comet, satellite, star, planet. I'm assuming that I don't know the answers. Sometimes I'll know the answers, but, but Whenever you can approach a question, you know, think about this. Multiple choices. One of the choices is correct. All the other choices are incorrect. And being able to identify either correct or incorrect is helpful. So let's focus on what we know it's not. The moon is not a comet. You know, it's not streaking through the sky. Uh, satellite. That doesn't seem right because it's, you know, satellite maybe we think man-made. But let's consider the other options. Star. Well, 
I know the moon's not a star. It's not emitting its own light. It's reflecting light from our sun. It's not a star. Planet. So you might think planet. But the Earth is a planet, and the moon, it's not a planet. Actually, I think satellite's going to be the better answer because it's orbiting around a planet. So I think satellite is the correct answer, and it is. But I don't focus on what the question is about. Focus on the way that I'm thinking through it. Who receives Dronacharya Award? And, of course, I have no idea what that is. No idea whatsoever. So this is a complete guess. Scientists, movie actors, sports coaches, or sportsmen. Now, here's the thing that I'm going to do that you might not have known before. Sportsmen and sports coaches, those are two related things. Two related things, hmm, they are not the same thing, sportsmen or sports coaches. If you see opposites or related things, that's something to pay attention to. Scientists and movie actors and sports, these are very different fields. What do you think? The Dronacharya Award. And I can't guess anything from the name of that. Is this some award in Singapore or India? Mm, but we have sports coaches and sportsmen. I'm going to eliminate both of those because they're close. I don't know. It, it could be one of these two. If you know, if you can tell that these two, the two things, two of the answers are essentially the same thing, but said in different ways, then you can eliminate both of them, right? Because it can't be, they can't both be right unless you have an all of the above or something like that. But, um, uh, so if you look for, you know, two answers, if they're basically the same thing said two different ways, then eliminate both of them. So I'm going to go with eliminating both of them, even though coaches and sportsmen, maybe those are different enough that it is one of those. I'm just going to guess scientists because scientists seem like they should get an award. Oh, and I was wrong. It was sports coaches. So this is a case where coaches and sportsmen, they are different and you know, I was drawn to those two, thinking mm, maybe it's one of those two, because you know, why would you mention sports twice? Why not mention scientists, actors, sports, and dancers or something like that? So, okay, I'm not planning on getting all these right, by the way. Uh, who was the first Indian to be elected to the British Parliament? And we have four names that I can't even pronounce, and frankly, I have no idea here at all. This is a complete guess, and I have nothing to help me here. Um, first Indian to be to be elected to the British Parliament. Gandhi's on the list. I don't think he was elected to the British Parliament. Nehru, I've heard of that name before, but no clue. Okay, so I was only able to eliminate Gandhi on that one. In which year did India join the United Nations? 1954, 1955, 1956, 1957. Now, oftentimes you're given a question where it's a range of numbers or dates or things like that. Usually, again, this is just a trick for guessing. It's always best to know, but usually it's not the, the, the smallest number or the biggest number, right? So it's going to be 1955 or 1956 is my guess. It's only a 50-50 at best. You know, it could I could be wrong. It could be one of these two. But usually it's not the smallest or the biggest. Okay, so I'm just going to go with 1955. It's a 50-50 between these two. And ta-da, I got it right. Pure guess. Pure guess. I have no clue on that. So <laughs> the techniques that I'm telling you about, it's for when you have, you know, how do you guess well? And and using every little bit of knowledge that you have to eliminate answers first. Narrow it down. If you can narrow it down to two, 50-50, that's pretty good. And you might, you might still find a clue someplace. A hole made in a brass plate and it is heated. The size of the hole will do what? So here's a piece of brass. One, one important thing. Understand the question. Try to reword it. So here's a piece of, of a plate of brass. A hole is punched into it. Okay, here's this hole. And now the, the, the plate is heated. So will the hole increase in size, decrease in size, first increase and then decrease, or remain unchanged? What's it going to do? 
And in this case, I do have some prior knowledge that might help. I know that when things are heated, they tend to expand. And I even mentioned this in one of the lectures about matter and solids expanding, you know, as the molecules move faster. So, <laughs> so you might think, oh, increase. But keep in mind, the material is expanding. The whole is not the material. And so I'm guessing that the hole is going to get smaller that the, the as the brass heats up that it will get smaller. So I'm going to guess decrease. But even if I had no clue, increase and decrease are opposites. Usually, usually if you have opposites, it's one of those two choices. If you have two things, two questions in the list and they are opposites of each other, it's probably one of those two. Oh, and I was totally wrong. First increase and then decrease. So there's something that I'm not understanding. I went based on what I thought I knew, and I was wrong. Um, first increase and then decrease. Hmm. I don't know what's going on there. You know, I don't know the explanation. If you really want to know, nope, it doesn't give an explanation. Okay, so I was wrong. Uh, and it's good to practice because you'll be wrong a lot and and you'll get less stressed about the fact that you get things wrong. Which language was patronized by the rules of Delhi Sultanate? Hindi, Arabic, Persian, or Turkish? I have no clue. Patronized by, I don't even know what they're asking. What is it, you know, to patronize a language by the rules of the Delhi Sultanate? Well, we have Hindi, Arabic, Persian, and Turkish. Now, what we have is one language that I know is from India and Arabic, Persian, Turkish that are from outside of India. I'm going to go with the one that's from India. And it's wrong. No, I have no idea what patronized means. So, again, it's always best to actually know something first. Who discovered magnetic field of electric current? And you would think that I would know this because we just talked about magnetism and stuff. I don't actually know this. Ampere, Faraday, Fleming, and Edison. I'm going to say no to Edison because uh, he's more recent uh, and discovered magnetic field of electric current. So this is the idea that when there's a current, that there's a magnetic field around it, that right-hand rule. Um, I get to eliminate Fleming. I, I think he was more of a chemist. So between Ampere and Faraday, both of these guys did stuff with electricity. I'm going to go with Faraday. And yay, I got one right. Um, again, the specifics, it's not, you know, we're just trying to look for patterns and how can we approach the test. Which country leads in the production of rubber? Australia, India, Malaysia, or Myanmar? Production of rubber. I'm going to guess not Australia. Um, India, Malaysia, Myanmar. What do I know about rubber? Not much. I think it's a tropical tree. Uh, India is certainly the biggest of these countries by far. Uh, Malaysia, though, may have big rubber plantations. I don't know. Myanmar? I'm going to guess not Myanmar. Uh, that's also known as Burma. It's a pretty small country. So I'm between India and Malaysia. India is a much bigger country, but Malaysia is in the right climate. Uh, I'm going to guess Malaysia, even though I kind of think it's India. Hey, and I guessed right, and I can't tell you why. Uh, Panchayat Raj is a one-tier system, two-tier system, three-tier system, four-tier system. I have no clue what they're asking about. Panchayat Raj. One, two, three, or four is all I know. I'm going to guess that it's not one, and it's not four. So is it a two or a three-tier system? Three sounds good to me. Ta-da! Why did I guess three? Because humans like threes. They like patterns of threes. So even, you know, A, B, C, we, we have a tendency to say, you know, duck, duck, goose. We have a tendency to go for things in threes anyway. But that was a pretty random guess. Which is the most irrigated state in India? The most irrigated state in India. And I wouldn't even know that Bihar, Punjab, Andhra Pradesh, or Uttar Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh you know, I have no clue that they were even Indian states. Couldn't tell you that. 
Um, I'm going to go with number three just because, you know, wrong, wrong, right, duck, duck, goose. And I was wrong. Bihar. It's a case where knowing something, you know, about it would have been helpful. Um, okay. Headquarters of Amnesty International. Is it New York, London, Washington, or Berlin? Amnesty International, New York, or Washington are both U.S. London is, is in Berlin or in Europe. You know, we have Great Britain and Germany. Amnesty International. I'm kind of between London and Washington, but, you know, watch. It's going to be New York. I'm going to go for Washington. Ah, London. London was my very first instinct, but you know what? I had nothing to go on really there other than I thought, well, maybe the British are more more kind than the Americans. That was what I was first thinking for London. Yellowstone National Park. Well, I, the, again, it's always best to actually know. I know that Yellowstone National Park is in the USA. Now, somebody from Singapore or India might not know that, but that one I just know which is always best to just know. And look at that. When you do know, then the other answers, France, China, or the Maldives, the other answers are ridiculous. That's the importance of knowing, you know, that it's clear. If you really know, then if you understand the, the question correctly and you understand the answer choices correctly, it should be obvious. It should be obvious when you know it. Which of the following animals was not native to India? Elephant, horse, rhinoceros, tiger. Hmm, not native to India. Well, boy, there are a lot of elephants in India. Tons of horses, I'm sure. But the horses maybe were brought there. Rhinoceros? I don't know if there's an Indian rhinoceros tiger. Okay, so I'm eliminating elephant and tiger. It's kind of between the horse and the rhinoceros. And the horse is very useful. So the horse was taken around the world. Uh, you know, if the rhinoceros is in India or was in India, you know, it's not because people would have brought it there, probably. You know, it's not an easy animal to transport, and it's not as useful as a horse. So a horse, uh, you know, there are horses all over the world because they're a useful animal. So I'm going to say the horse is not native to India, and that's correct. Um because the horse would have been transported. Again, it's just a, I, I just trying to give you examples of thinking through and little tricks that might help you in making your guess. Which of the following states is highly flood prone as well as drought prone? And here it's pure guess. West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar. I know nothing about these. I don't know which part of India they're in. I know nothing about them. So... A, B, C, or D, any one of them is most likely. I like to choose C when I have no clue. In this case, it was D. But, you know, just there are times when guessing you only have, you know, if you have four answers, you only have a one in four chance. And that's as good as you can get. I'm just trying to give you tricks to get it from one in four chance to one in three or one in two. Um, and since I'm talking about guessing, you know, getting it down to a one in two chance, 50% chance, that's as good as you're going to get. You can have better than 50% chance if you actually know the material. The equator passes through which of the following continents? Africa, Australia, Europe, and North or North America. Uh, through which of the following continents? Only one? Well, I know it's not North America. Uh, it's not Europe, and Australia is going to be below the equator. I mean, Africa, definitely the equator passes through Africa. Um, so, but if I wasn't sure about Australia, you know, Europe and North America, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's definitely above, you know, too far north. Australia, you know, if I wasn't sure, is Australia too far south? Is it completely below the equator? Or is the top of Australia go through the equator? I don't know. But... I don't know. Here I just knew. I mean, Africa has a lot of equatorial countries. Days and nights are equal throughout the globe when the sun is above the poles, the Tropic of Cancer, the equator, or the Tropic of Capricorn. 
I'm not sure I understand the question. Days and nights are equal throughout the globe. Um, I'd say when the sun's above the equator, right? Because if days and nights are equal in the southern part and in the northern part, the sun above the equator would make the most sense since that's the middle. So, um, you know, the poles, that doesn't make sense. Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, these are part way up. You know, they're equidistant from the equator. I don't know how many degrees up or down. And I don't know which one's north, which one's south. But they're both tropics. They're both... See, if I... I, could, I can eliminate the poles because the sun's not going to go... You know, if the sun's not going to be above the North Pole and the South Pole, that doesn't make sense. Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Why would days and nights be equal all over the globe at just one of these places? Right? It doesn't make sense. I, so just because, so just, you know, I, I could eliminate both of them. Seasonal unemployment refers to banks, agriculture, public sector, or private sector. And again, this is a test, you know, for students in India. So seasonal unemployment to me means like agriculture, probably, because you're going to work when the season's right and not work, you know, have no work when when it's not the growing season or the harvesting season. Banks, public sector, private sector, they're not going to be seasonal like that. Agriculture is seasonal. So, okay. Looking at that a little bit more, public sector, private sector, banks. Banks are going to, you know, banks could be part of the private sector. So, you know, you could probably eliminate both of them anyway. But here, you know, seasonal, what, what, which of these would be seasonal? So agriculture was seasonal. Which is at the apex of the three-tier system of Panchayata Raj system? Now, here's an important thing. We had a question earlier in the test about how many tiers are in the Panchayata Yati Raj system. And I guessed three, and I got it right, and I had no clue. But look at this. If you're able to go through the whole test, oftentimes one question will give you the answer to another question. What's at the apex of the three-tier system? So I can say, oh, yeah, it's a three-tier system. So say I had chosen four or two or one. As soon as I saw this question and saw that it related to Panchayati Raj system, if I remembered, if I could think back to the other question, I go back and change my answer to, to a three-tier system. Um, sometimes these online tests are set up so you can't go back and change the answers. I don't like that. I think you should be able to see the whole test, change your answers. It's kind, it, it's not cheating. It's using your resources, you know, where one question will give you the answer to another question. So look for that. Now, so in, in terms of this, you know, what's at the apex, the top of Panchayati Raj system? I have no idea. Gram Sabha, Gram Panchayat, Zila Parishad, Panchayat Samiti. I have two that have Panchayat in them, and two that say Gram something. I'm going to go with B because it's because if you're trying to throw somebody off, think of it in terms of the person making the test. If this is the correct answer, and it might not be, but look, if Gram Panchayat is the correct answer. One of these words is in another answer, Gram Saba. So if somebody just remembered Gram, they wouldn't know. And if they just remembered Panchayat, Panchayat Samiti is also in an answer. So because this has a word in one answer and a word in another answer, that's going to be my guess. And I was completely wrong. Ta-da! Zila Parishad. Okay. Guessing isn't always the best. It's never the best choice. Never the best choice just to guess. Zila Parishad. And I, I, I don't know how I would have guessed that. I'm, I'm looking for, you know, something that would have clued me off. I don't know. Since I know nothing about the system. Which of the following gases is used for refrigeration? Chlorine, sulfur dioxide, phosphine, or ammonia? I don't know. I think I kind of know this. Chlorine gas is pretty deadly. So I'm thinking 
Why would you want to use that for refrigeration? Although ammonia is pretty deadly too, and I'm telling you, that's the one that I think it is, um, just because of the properties of ammonia. Sulfur dioxide and phosphine, I, I don't know anything about them. Um, I see nothing in here that would help me guess. So I think ammonia, just because maybe I've heard someplace that ammonia can be used for refrigeration, but, and yeah, so it, that's quest, you know, that's a case where I knew a little, a little tidbit that I happen to remember, but yeah, other, there's nothing, sometimes there is no helpful clue. Aspirin is the common name of salicylic acid, salicylate, methyl salicylate, acetyl salicylic acid. So clearly it's salicylic or something, you know, something salicyl, salicylate, methyl salicylate, acetyl salicylic acid, salicylic acid. Um, so I'm going to go with salicylic acid, um, but it was acetyl salicylic acid. Now, there is a rule. If it was a complete guess, I said sometimes, you know, I like the letter C. But in this case, look, acetyl salicylic acid is the longest answer. If there's a longest answer and you're just purely guessing, a longest answer is often a good one. Okay, we'll just do one more page of them and, uh, and then we'll probably close it up. When a man circles around the earth in a satellite, then his mass becomes zero, but weight remains constant. Mass remains constant, but weight becomes zero. Both mass and weight remain constant. Both mass and weight remain zero. Ooh, I'm glad they asked this question. Uh, one, because we've talked about it. But two, because it, look, this is, a, this is a pretty typical structure for a multiple choice question. Mass becomes zero, but weight remains constant. Mass remains constant, but weight becomes zero. These are two opposites. When you see two opposites, it's almost always one of those two. Both mass and weight remain constant. Both mass and weight remain zero. Now, these are two opposites also. However, you know, he's up above the Earth in a satellite. Um, so for nothing to change, that doesn't seem right. Mass and weight remain zero. These are opposite, but... I like this one better, where one thing changes and the other thing doesn't. And hopefully, hopefully you remember that weight is a function of gravity. Mass is going to remain constant. So mass remains constant, but weight becomes zero. You know, he's weightless in, in space, in a satellite. So, but he still has mass. Um, so hopefully you remembered that. But even if you didn't, Hopefully you'd see, oh, these two things are opposite. So I think it's one of those two. Hopefully you can get it down to at least one of those two. The weight of an object at the poles is greater than at the equator. This is because what? So weight of the object greater at the poles than at the equator. Why? So they're telling you that is a true statement and saying, is it because of the shape of the Earth? The attraction of the moon is maximum at the Earth's surface. The attraction of the sun is maximum at the Earth's surface, or gravitational pull is more at the poles. Um, the only thing that relates to this that we actually talked about is that I said, you know, if you go out on top of a mountain, you're going to weigh less than it, at sea level. Uh, or if you go into a valley, you're going to weigh a little bit more than if you were up at the top of the mountain. So um, I'm going to go with the shape of the Earth, that the Earth's not a perfect circle, so maybe at the poles. Uh, you're a little closer to the center. Anyway, I'm going to go with shape of the earth. Gravitational pull is more at the poles. Why would it be that way if it's not to do with the shape of the earth? I'm kind of mad that I didn't choose this one. Because, you know, if weight is more, gravitational pull is more. That's the same thing. It's saying the same thing. I should have seen that. Now, I still don't, it doesn't tell us why. It doesn't tell us why, and I wish it would. I don't know why gravitational pull would be more at the poles, unless it has to do with the shape of the Earth. Okay, so I'm kind of mad about missing that question. Usually if I miss, I don't care. But I should have seen 
I should have seen that. The weight of an object is greater, gravitational pull is more. It's, it's saying the same thing. The first metal used by man was iron, copper, aluminum, or gold. Well, I think of the Iron Age, you know, when we could use iron, but were we using gold before then as trade? I'm going to go with iron because of the whole Iron Age historical period. Oh, copper. Copper. I had no, no clue. I was guessing between iron and gold. Gobar gas contains mainly carbon dioxide, methane, ethylene, or carbon monoxide. Gobar gas. Never heard of it. No clue at all. Mainly carbon dioxide, methane, ethylene, carbon, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. There's nothing in that word that tells me. Gobar. Gobar. I'm going to guess ethylene. Methane. I had no idea. Gobar gas. I don't even know what they're talking about. Um, methane. I, I, was, I, I went with ethylene because it's combustible, you know, and you actually would use it. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, you can't burn those. Methane and ethylene you can burn. Gobar gas, if I looked it up, I'm guessing, since it contains mainly methane, maybe it's like gas you collected off the farm from, you know, animal manure or something. I don't know. The content of water is greater than fats. Content of water is greater than fats. The plasma is more than proteins. Proteins are more than fats and fats less than plasma which constitutes the major part of the human body? Boy, that is a poorly worded question. And this is a good point that there are tons of poorly worded questions. Like when you write a test question, you don't speak the same way that you would normally speak, do you? Right? Nobody, nobody speaks the way that test questions are written. So another clue for you would be to write test questions. Uh, to get in the mindset of how do you write a multiple choice question? You know, so you go into your bedroom and you say, hmm, the pillow is on the bed, the chair, the couch, or the ceiling. Or, you know, that, that one's obvious, but you don't ever talk that way, right? You don't say, can you go get the pillow and it's either on A, the bed, B, the couch, C, the ceiling, or, you know, you know, you don't talk like that. But in doing a dumb example like that, you realize it might be difficult to come up with four places where the pillow might reasonably be placed. And so you throw in the ceiling, even though it's completely ridiculous. Most multiple choice questions, they have ridiculous answers in them uh, because it's difficult to write four answers that sound reasonable. So, uh, which constitutes the major part of the human body? And this is a poorly worded question, but we have proteins, plasma, water, fats. The content of water is greater than fats. The plasma is more than proteins. Proteins are more than fats, and fats less than plasma. So, basically, they're giving you an answer here of how to order things. So, let's just use this. I, I, I'm going to guess water, but... But let's let's look at this. Water greater than fats. So so if um, if this is water here, let's do water here and fats here. Plasma more than proteins. We don't know plasma proteins. Okay, plasma proteins. Proteins are more than fats. I put fats here. So now we have fats. We have proteins. Let's see. Proteins more than fats. Okay. Sorry, proteins more than fats. Fats are lower. Fats less than plasma. Where was plasma? Plasma is more than proteins. So we have fats, proteins, plasma, water, I think. Fats less than plasma, proteins. Anyway, I, I think that was their order. Anyway, I think water's at the highest. Um, it would be a lot easier if I could just write these down. You know, just write it down. Write on your test. Write on a sheet of paper. Write if you can write. Uh, fix their poorly worded questions into something that makes sense. The water in an open pond remains cool even in hot summer because 
of continuous evaporation of water because water radiates heat more rapidly than the atmosphere because water absorbs heat rapid, less rapidly than the atmosphere because water absorbs heat more rapidly than the atmosphere. Look at this. Um, I think evaporation would have something to do with it, but look at this. We have radiates heat more rapidly than the atmosphere, absorbs heat less rapidly than the atmosphere, absorbs heat more rapidly than the atmosphere. Now, which of these is our total opposites? These last two. Absorbs heat less rapidly, absorbs heat more rapidly than the atmosphere. So they're comparing water to the atmosphere and comparing how it absorbs heat. So if the pond is remaining cool, is it cool because it absorbs heat less rapidly or absorbs heat more rapidly? Well, if it's remaining cool, it would absorb heat less rapidly. So even though I like the answer, continuous evaporation of water, I'm going to go with this one because there's a pair of opposites. And what did I tell you? If you have a pair of opposites, it's almost, almost always one of those two. Ta-da! So hopefully that is, you know, nothing else. You've got a few helpful hints here. If a large number of people are enclosed in a room, then oxygen decreases and carbon dioxide increases. Enclosed in a room, that sounds really good to me. People are using oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. Oxygen increases and carbon dioxide decreases. Now look at this. Complete opposites. Complete opposites again. So if, if, you're, if you can find complete opposites, choose one of those two and think about it, you know, and, and choose the right one if you can think about it. Um, and here we have both oxygen and carbon dioxide decrease, both oxygen and carbon dioxide increase. They're just trying to come up with more answers, you know. It's, it's, whenever possible, come up with an answer before reading through the answer possibilities. In a large number of people enclosed in a room, then I can't come up with an answer. Then people go crazy. They start stabbing each other. I don't know what this is, question is about. So I have to glance at least at the answers. Oh, it's about what happens to the oxygen levels and the carbon dioxide levels. So instead of looking at the answers, think about it. Well, if a whole bunch of people are in the room and it's airtight, they're going to they're gonna be breathing out more. They're going to have more carbon dioxide, less oxygen. You know, you can think about it. But uh, try to answer questions. A well-written multiple choice question, in my opinion, allows the person to create an answer before looking at the choices. Most multiple choice questions are not written that way. They are not well written. It is not advisable to sleep under a tree at night because of the. Well, I like. I would, it seems reasonable to me to sleep under a tree. What, the branch might fall off. What could go wrong? Lightning strike. Release of oxygen in lesser amount. Release of oxygen in larger amount. Release of carbon monoxide. Release of carbon dioxide. This makes no sense to me. Why would sleeping under a tree at night change? levels of any gas that makes zero sense to me complete nonsense i think this question is complete and utter nonsense but if i have to choose something releasing oxygen in a lesser amount or a larger amount so <laughs> i'm going to go with one of these because it's um because they're opposites release of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide well I'm tempted to go with release of carbon monoxide because that's the only one that's really dangerous. That one's dangerous. So, you know, why would you not sleep under a tree at night? Well, here's something dangerous that I've never heard of as being a problem. And I've slept under plenty of trees. But I'm going to go with one of these two just because they're opposites. And because I said it's usually one of these opposites. And releasing oxygen in a larger amount doesn't seem like a problem. So I'll go with in a lesser amount. And it's carbon dioxide. <laughs> I have no clue. Would not have guessed that. That was not on my list of guesses. Which of the following is balanced fertilizer for plants? Urea, ammonium sulfate, nitrates, or compost? I'm going to go with compost because that's a mixture of stuff. Which of the following is a fast growing tree? Teak, eucalyptus, banyan, or coconut? I'm going to go with eucalyptus just because they seem to grow fast. So, again, it's always nice if you know something about it. Um, let me just show you. I'm going to go back to the online tests in general. And 
I'm going to go to uh, Tamil general knowledge questions. Okay, so just because this is in a language that I can't read. Okay, so just to practice guessing where I definitely have no other knowledge. I'm not going to try translating it. Okay, so something, and I'm given numbers. And I'm going to say it's not the lowest number, it's not the highest number. So it's one of these two, is my guess. So it's 50-50. Do you like 12? Do you like 18? We have three of them that are kind of lower, and then one that's way out there. So I'm going to go with 12, just because it's the middle of the three that are kind of grouped. It was 18. Uh, 108, maybe I should have gone with 18 because there's a 1 and an 8, and so people remember, you know, kind of remembered it was, you know, the, one, the 108 could have been to throw them off because of there's the 1 and the 8. Anyway, I was right that it was one of those two, but I guessed wrong. Okay, blah, 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 blah. No clue what it's asking. This one's quite a bit longer. It could be that one. This one's longer, but not super longer. This one I'm going to go with, but it was actually that one. But look, I was down to one of these two. Okay. Of course, I have no idea what the question's about or the answers. Um, here, I don't have much to go on. This one's a little bit longer. Ta-da, it's right. This one's a little bit longer here. Ah, oh, and it was wrong. Yeah, you know, pure guessing. Um, here I have two that are in English and the, and the other two are in Tamil. I'm going to go with one of the English, you know, FSH or TSH. FSH? No, it's one of the Tamil ones. I have no idea. Um, oh, and it was the longest. Darn it. I should have just gone with the longest. Um, because that one's, a, you know, a reasonable length longer. If I could even recognize these letters, you know, I might look for some key words, some words that appear in the question that might appear in the answers. I don't even have that to go with, so I'm just random. Pretty random guessing here. This one's a little tiny bit longer. Eh, wrong. Here's one. I'm guessing it's B here because look, all the others look like kind of one word things. This one's definitely longer. And of course it's wrong. So you know what? This is this is how it happens if you have no clue and the only option is to guess. Um, then you're gonna be wrong most of the time. Most of the time. Right? I didn't do any better than a chimpanzee on these. Um, did I get any of them right? Let's see, wrong, 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 right, wrong, wrong, wrong. So yeah. Always best to know. Um, so, again, go to timeoutcube.com, find the online tests, uh, practice taking tests. They have all sorts of tests on here for crazy stuff. Uh, and you can find other sources of tests, but just it's a game, folks. Treat it as a game. Okay. And just like in a game, if you get points wrong, don't freak out. Just keep playing the game. I'll try to give you more clues. As we go along, maybe some clues uh, about studying and, you know, when you're studying, how to approach the textbook as though you were taking a test already, uh, which could help you. But I'm going to stop for now. All the best on Monday's test. Hope for great things. Thanks. Bye.